But this race, I mean, John, what John talked about is, is accurate. This race at the end of the day will be turnout. It's going to be who wants it more. It's going to be who's going to be willing to make that extra call or say to that person when you hear, oh gosh, I'm tired of all of them. And I know when you make the calls or knock on the doors, you get a lot of, oh, I'm done with everyone. We, if you're done with everyone and you tune off the TV, all you do is turn our country over to the extremes. And that's not where things are going to get fixed. They're going to fix when common sense, willing to find common ground kind of people, and John has exhibited that kind of leadership on the county board. That's what we need in Washington right now. Oh, my personal story is so kind of quintessentially American. You know, first in my family to graduate from college, and then went on to law school, came out with student debt, failed a couple of times in business before. I managed to eke out a living in cell phones. <laughs> Those don't know I was the co-founder of Nextel, so I'm the only politician that says, even when I'm teaking, talking, keep your cell phones on. Doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> You know, and I, and I worry, especially when I see so many of the young people here. Um, I'm not sure I would have had the courage to try two or three times if I'd come out with sixty, seventy, eighty thousand $80,000 worth of student debt. Why we need to make sure we continue to invest in higher education. Why we need to continue to invest in public education. Why we need to find ways to refinance student rate loans to bring them down to reasonable amounts. Why we actually even got to do things like, I've got a bill with Marco Rubio even. You know, it says, why don't we cap Student debt, replace, uh, student debt at 10% of income, income-based repayment. So if you want to get out of school and, you know, try that business or follow your career, follow your passion, and maybe you know, buy that house, start that family, we ought to not crush a generation with these crushing amounts of student debt. And it has effects on everything. It has effects on the housing market recovery. We've got to get that right, because in America, we can't guarantee you success, but in America, everybody ought to get a fair shot. And that fair shot means that right to get a good quality education. It means you shouldn't go broke going to college. It means that we need an educational system that values not just college, but also folks who want to do career or technical education. We need, a, frankly, and I know this is not politically correct to say in some place like Fairfax or Loudoun, but we need an educational system that says we're going to put as much value in somebody who chooses to be a plumber or an electrician as a doctor and a lawyer. If there are things to fix, yeah, I'll go fix it. Maybe there ought to be a cheaper plan. I believe there ought to be a cheaper option out there. We, I, I believe we ought to maybe cut back on some of the bureaucracy. But I remind folks, you know, 49 years ago, Congress passed Medicare. Everybody loves Medicare right now. Congress didn't get 100% right on Medicare. They had to come back and fix it time and again. It's not a new slash. Congress never gets it 100% right. <laughs> but, but in a reasonable place, in a government like ours that is built on the notion that people have to find common ground, you don't say, we're going to just repeal it 50 times. You say, no, let's roll up our sleeves and fix it. Yeah. And fix it. Yeah. One reason, I, I know, you know most of us here are Democrats, and I know sometimes say, oh, Mark, I don't talk to us about the debt again. But it's it, you know, it is potentially robbing a generation of their fair shot. You know, we're at seventeen trillion dollars in debt. It goes up three billion dollars a night just with interest. That's a lot, even if you're John Faust. <laughs> <laughs> you know, interest rates go up one point, one percentage point adds one hundred twenty billion dollars just on interest we got to pay. Think how many kids could be educated on that. Think how many roads could be built. Think how many, you know. Veterans could get the services they deserve and honor. So it is going to require us, again, to have a tax code that's more pro-growth and rational, that doesn't incent companies to move abroad, but actually keep their businesses here. It means to make sure that we maintain the promise of Medicare and Social Security for generations going forward, and acknowledge the fact that that will take some changes because we're blessed to be living longer. That's good news. I ask you as you kind of in these last 51 days, who's counting? We are. We are. 
it's why, you know, when you hear somebody and you say, well, gosh, you know, John's a great guy and I know Warner's trying, but, you know, they, they're never going to get anything done. I know you hear that as well. I'm just going to work it in my community, or I'm just going to work in my church, or synagogue, or mosque, or temple, or you know, I you know it's not going to happen in Washington. We, you know, there are great things we can do in our community. There are great things that happen here in Sterling or in Loudoun. Or I was up in Leesburg or in Leesburg. But you know, we need a functioning federal government as well. From our national defense to our debt to these programs that can only be solved with a national consensus. And we lose that notion that we can't see a problem and fix it. Well, that's not the America that I want all of us or our kids to continue in. And the exercise of how we get that right is going to happen in the next 51 days by talking to folks about who's got the agenda that are willing to find common ground. Who's going to look at a problem, not just from one party's perspective, but realize that quite honestly, and I know I'll make some of you mad on this, there's good ideas in both parties. There's good people in both parties. They just got to be willing to work together again. The genius of our system was our founders set up a slightly dysfunctional government on purpose that actually required compromise. Yet particularly some folks on the other side say, oh my gosh, almost by default, we can't ever work with anybody on the other party. That's not how things get done in America. Sign up for an extra volunteer shift. Be willing to make an extra call. Be willing to walk an extra neighbor. Be willing to talk to people, you know, because the hardest thing sometimes is whether it's at a you know, religious service or at school or at work to actually call, talk to people. Say, you know what? These are good folks running. You got to get out there. It's your country too. You do your part. We'll do our part. And come November fourth, we will have a, not only a great victory for Virginia, but we're going to get our country back on the right path. Thank you all. God bless you. Let's get out of the room.